Oh, my hair is a mess. Hey guys, it's Dana and it's Tuesday, so we're gonna talk about money. And it's also August, which means that it is almost time for back to school. And if you are anything like me, then you are counting down the days. It's not that I don't like the summer, but the summer, it can be a little bit crazy for the kids. Everyone's in the house and I am looking forward to it. So I wanted to share with you 20 money saving ideas for back to school. So let's get to it. Okay, so CNBC said that in 2016, parents spent a whopping $659 for their elementary school children, $957 per child for middle school, and $1,498 per child that was in high school for the year. So I don't know whether this includes clubs or, you know, and activities or what, uh, but it seemed like a pretty high number to me. Right now, all of our kids are in elementary school, so that's $698 per child. And I can tell you right now that that is not our budget. Uh, we have a much lower budget. And in this video, first I'm gonna share with you 10 tips to save money on back to school supplies. And then I'm gonna share with you 10 of our family traditions for back to school that are done in a frugal way. Um, so let's start with the back to school supplies. All right, number one is to wait for the supply list. If you start shopping before the supply list is out, then you might end up buying stuff that you don't need and you're gonna waste money on that. And our supply list for our school came out mid-July, so I think that's plenty of time to get shopping, And but I would definitely wait till you have that list so you can take it with you. And it's just been tested over and over again by myself and other people, by them. They have tested it. <laughs> Studies have been done, I believe, that when you shop with a list, you spend less money. So you wanna have a list of precisely what you need for school. Then you wanna look for coupons online or you wanna look for special sales at the stores you shop at and you wanna hit them right when it's the lowest. So if this is good if you can track this from year to year, look at the different stores, see when the sales usually go on and which store has the lowest prices. And if this is the first year your child's in school, you're not gonna have that history. But you know, over time, try to pay attention and write it down and then you know which stores are gonna have the lowest prices for you in your area. Number three is that I suggest that you shop early. So it's the earliest that you can, providing you have your list. So if you shop early, then you're get, gonna get the best selection and then you're not gonna be frantically rushing around from store to store and willing to pay whatever just to get that item that your child needs. So shop as early as you can. Sometimes they have a lot of really good sales early in the season. So if you wait till last minute, you're gonna end up spending more money. It's just it's just gonna happen because you're, you're, you're stressed out because your kid's with you and you're like, oh my God, school's starting you just start throwing things in your car and you might overspend on something that you wouldn't have done earlier when you weren't in such a rush to get it done because you weren't pressed for time. Number four, I would say to don't shop at all. <laughs> and what I mean by this is our school, uh, at the end of the school year last year, our daughter, our oldest daughter is going into fourth grade. So the end of third grade, they sent out an email from the school saying that we could order on this website called First Supply, I think it's called first day school supplies. And if we went on there, the teachers, actually, you know, the teachers for fourth grade put in there exactly the, the school supplies that they needed for their class. So we could go in, we could put in the school code, what grade our daughter was going into, and then we could order this, this kit with all the school supplies, exactly what the teacher wants, and then it goes, it ships it right to the school, so it's there on the first day of school. Now this may or may not save you money. They kit for us for fourth grade, it was $52.99, that was the total. And then my husband did do the shopping for our first graders, and he's gonna do a, a school supply haul video like he does every year, and that'll be coming out soon. And what he spent total for the two boys um, was oh, 30, he spent $39.74 a piece. So obviously right there you can see it's cheaper if you actually go to the stores but he also had to take the time and energy to go and he had coupons, which he'll go over with you in the video that he does. But so it's, you know, it might, you might, it might be worth it to you to spend that extra, the extra few dollars to have it just shipped right to the school. 
But you know what, if you go shopping sometimes, you end up throwing extra stuff in the cart that you don't really need, especially if you bring the kids. So if you have older children or children who you know really like to go shopping with you, it might actually be cheaper for you to order the supplies from the school if it's possible for you to do that and have them sent right to the school. That way you don't have the kids with you trying to throw things in. But that might be a tradition that you enjoy, so we'll get into that later in the video. Where you shop is important. You want to, I like to go to the Dollar Tree as much as possible when we are shopping for school supplies. I've heard teachers say the Dollar Tree is their best friend. They love the Dollar Tree. Um, there's tons of school stuff at the Dollar Tree. So, and there, it's always a dollar. So you don't have to worry about the sales there. So you don't have to be in a rush or, you know, worry about when you're shopping. If you are a last minute person, you might want to go hit up the Dollar, the dollar Tree. Also Walmart, Target, those are great places to go for school supplies. Number six is maybe shop late for discounts, which goes against what I said earlier. However, sometimes if you shop a little later, they're discounting all the school supplies because they want to get them off the shelves. So if you know every year your kids are going to need, you know, those black and white composition notebooks or, you know, pencils or, you know, uh, crayons, then you might want to just stock up on some of those boxes and then you could save them for next year. So get them when they're really cheap and then you hide them away somewhere if you're organized like that. And don't forget that you bought them though when the next school year comes up. But that's a good idea is to shop late in the season for the following year. Number seven, if you live in a cold weather climate, which we do in the Philadelphia area, we need winter coats. So it's not the coldest here as it is other places. If you live in Minnesota, then you really need these. But I suggest shopping for winter coats in the spring if you can. I think February is when they're the lowest priced, but you wanna to try to get your winter coats um, early if you can before and then you know in early in the summer and then that way you'll have them if you buy them in the fall they're going to be the most expensive so shop those early which brings me to back to school clothes um, some people like to go back to school clothing shopping with their kids again that might be your tradition but um, that can get really expensive. What I suggest you do is go through the closets and dressers of your children and purge clothes that don't fit or hand them down to younger children and pull out all your, we have like, you know, bat, you know trash bags filled with winter clothes, fall clothes, because we have seasons. We have four seasons here. So we pull those out late summer and try to go through them and then neatly organize and fold them and put them, you know, with the child where they fit. And then you see what you have, what maybe some clothes that still fit from last year that are still in good shape and then you can see how many new clothes you really need and then when you you know you might even have some old clothes you're ready to donate and you could you know try to sell those clothes to help with your budget to earn some money to buy new clothes with and then when you're purchasing new clothes maybe you want to start early in the summer to sort of start looking in your local thrift stores and try to find some good quality I do that I look for good quality name brand jeans at the thrift stores and I know the size of my daughter so I go and I shop early and whenever I find them you know I, I buy them you know pick them up and then slowly collect the clothes over the summer so in the fall she's got a good fall wardrobe going of some really high-end name brand clothes and you would never know that they were all thrifted or from goodwill oh my foot again is falling asleep okay all right, along that same line of thinking is to go through your old supplies from the previous year. Maybe you've done this, maybe you did it at the end of the year, but you can reuse some notebooks. Maybe some notebooks were never used. You can tear out the front few pages or you have some pencils. We have loads of pencils all over the house. So you collect some old, the older things you have that are haven't even been used possibly and things that you could repurpose for this next school year to help help you so you don't have to purchase as many supplies. And then number 10 with the supplies is to make a plan, right? Just like everything I'm always saying, you need to have a budget, how much money you're gonna spend, and then have a list, have a plan, and then that way you're not just running around stores last minute, in a hurry, buying things you don't really need. So you wanna make sure you're really organized, you have a plan, a game plan, are you taking your kids shopping with you, not taking them with you, which stores are you going to, what are you buying? And then, you know, if you're buying a new backpack, make sure that all the supplies fit in that backpack so you're not wasting money on things that don't work for you and your family. All right, so now let's get to some of the fun stuff, your first day or back to school traditions for you and your family. And I came up with 10 that are really inexpensive. And um, number one, let's get right into it, is balloons. You might want to get some balloons at the Dollar Tree and put them in your child's room for the first day of school. So when they wake up, they have you know floating balloons all through their room. You can go crazy and fill the room if you want to. 
Um, or you might want to just get a few to tie to the end of their bed so when they wake up, they can be excited. It's first day of school, it's like a party, and you want to have positive energy going for that first day of school. Second is breakfast, maybe you want to, or another meal. You want to make a special meal for that first day of school, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, if they go to a school, if you're not homeschooling, then lunch might be hard, but you can do breakfast or dinner. Number three is to make a bracelet. Uh, out of beads, maybe you guys can do this together or just purchase some inexpensive bracelets or maybe you have bracelets around the house. I like the idea of having you know you guys do it together where you're wearing a bracelet and your child is wearing a bracelet. You can find tons of ideas on Pinterest about making bracelets, but this way if you have a younger child especially you can make a bracelet with your home phone number on it so that way they have your number in case anything bad happens and they're you know they miss the bus or you know, they don't, you know they're on the wrong bus, your, their number is on their wrist and then you can tell them mommy's wearing the same bracelet so it's like we're together all day we both have the same bracelet on and then when they look down at the bracelet they can think of you all right number four is to pack a special love note inside their lunch I'm sure many of you might even do this every day but especially on the first day pack some kind of note in there for mommy and daddy um, telling them how much you love them and you're thinking about them on their first day of school Number five is something that we typically do, even though I wish we didn't do it every year because of the money, but we buy new backpacks for the kids every single year. I don't know how long we're gonna continue doing that, but my husband likes to do it, so he looks for inexpensive backpacks. They get to pick out a new backpack every year, which kind of makes sense during the elementary school years. Their backpacks get just beat up. They really, and they spill juice in them, water in them, snacks in them. So it is kind of good to get new ones. Um, it, we don't buy really pricey backpacks. If you buy a really nice backpack that's like monogrammed or engraved, whatever, not engraved, you know what I mean? <laughs> if it's customized to your child, then maybe it might not be in the budget to do that every year, maybe every two years, every three years you get a new backpack. That's kind of a fun tradition to do. Number six is to bring flowers for the teacher on the first day. I love this idea. We haven't done this yet, maybe we will this year, but I like the idea of bringing a bouquet of flowers, having your kids hand them to your teacher on their first day of school. Number seven is to give them warm chocolate chip cookies when they get home, or maybe you bake them a cake, do some kind of special dessert that they like for when they get home, they walk in the door and the house smells really good, like baked goods. Who doesn't like baked goods? I like that. Number eight is to have a picture of your child holding a sign that says first day of, of whatever grade. There's tons of printables on Pinterest that you can get, free printables. You can print them out, frame it, have your child hold it while you take a picture of them on their very first day of school. I'm sure you heard of this before. Lots of people do it. You can also do a video. I like doing videos of them getting on and off the bus or a video of them. You can do an interview. Tons of people do this where they print out an interview. Again, you can find this on Pinterest or online. You can find all kinds of different you know, interview questions where you video your child or you can write it down and you ask them the same questions. This is the thing that has to be the same questions every single year. And then it's kind of neat to look back over the years. You can even string all the video clips together into a montage for their high school graduation. If you're really on top of things and really organized, and then that would be so special at the end, of, at the end when they graduate to have this, you know, whole big thing with a video of, you know, them answering the same questions every single year. I like a video of the kids saying what they wanna be or a sign saying, you know, the, you know, every year that changes. And I think that's cool as it progresses through school to see I want to be a you know vet or I wanna be a doctor or I wanna be an architect. And that's so cool every year to see what they wanna be. And I think it helps them too to think about it. I don't think enough parents ask their children or discuss it as they're going through school about what career field they're interested in. And so I think that's a good way to help them to think on it is to say, what do you wanna be? And every year, obviously, that, that would be neat to see how that changes. Okay, so my feet are really falling asleep. I should sit on a stool or something. So you guys tell me how much money are you budgeting for back to school supplies or just in general for the year for school, not including private school tuition. Cause I know some of you, that's totally different conversation if you're paying private school tuition. Um, aside from that, how much money are you budgeting for your children for the year for school supplies and also for clubs? And um, I am here every Tuesday, you guys, talking all about money. So if it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.